Hey, Memo. Hey, how are we doing? Good, how are you? Yeah, great. Unfortunately, I couldn't join the call yesterday, uh, but Klaus told me all about it. You talk about the uh, workflow call? Yeah. Yeah, I was only on for a short time, so. Don't know how it went after I left. Yeah, all of it is not too many outcomes. Um, a little bit of voting, Casey pressed for a few votes and stuff, but uh, I think the first priority now is to get the talk right, so. Yeah, <clears throat> and I think that's settled now. Hey, is that uh, John? Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Tommy. And Eric. When Doug. Good morning. Hey, real quick, uh, mm -hmm. while we're in the main line, um, I was looking for the link to the document that, uh, that uh, you know, uh, sorry, the people have been using to collaborate on the current effort, and I, I had a hard time finding it. Oh, it's right here. Um, if you scroll down, it's this right here. Okay. Oh, yeah. Now it's. I see it. Yeah. Nice and clearly. Sorry. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Anytime. I like easy questions. Morning, Scott. Morning. Uh, you sound tired. <laughs> uh, See, I'm I'm good. This is what I've been. This is my seventh hour already. Because I had my first phone call was at six a.m. So you, I don't think you have a reason to to whine about being tired. Oh no, no, it's my seventh hour too. <laughs> I have a two-year-old. <laughs> okay, uh, let me try to bet what went up you then. My dog is getting old, and not only is she going deaf, but she can't sleep through the night anymore. So she's been waking us up in the middle of the night at least once or twice to go to the bathroom. So he has a two-year-old, no question. He wins. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't trump me with old dog. <laughs> uh, no, I, actually, I do think the uh, the two year old is probably harder because the dog is easy. I just open the door, let her out, let her back in five minutes later, and then I can go back to bed. But you never know what's going to happen with a two year old. Yeah, yes. usually it involves some sort of poop. <laughs> <laughs> well, mine does too, but at least I don't have to clean it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we've gone off topic here. Um, okay. hey, no, Kathy. I'm done. Um... <laughs> hey, Kathy, are you there? Hi, yes, I'm here. Hello, and I think I heard Clemens laugh in there. Yes, he did. Yes. I just said I, I just said good evening in German. Yes. Ah, okay. Guten Abend. Guten Abend. Yeah. And that's Klaus, thank you. Yes. <laughs> uh, I feel like I'm missing somebody. Oh, there we go, Colin. Hey, Doug. Hello. <laughs> yes, I guess while we're waiting, we could talk about horror stories with uh, <clears throat> bowel movements and stuff for Oh, no. Thanks. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> oh. Hey, Jim. Hey, Doug. Doug, you want to see a blast from the past? Oh, gosh. Sure. Okay. I'm going to turn my video on. Uh huh. And do you remember uh, this thing? Oh, wait a minute. Let me get close. I can't see that. It's. What? It's way too small. Hold on. Let's see if I can make you bigger. What is that? Oh, now I see Heinz. Or Heinz's video is taking over. Hold on. There must be an IoT demo. Oh, 
So I, I made yeah. this little demo board for KubeCon like 2018. And this was the physical representation of uh, open service broker service lights. Oh I my it. gosh, I forgot about I that. I used OSB to uh, control my home automation. And that was my little demo board. Uh, I figured it was, it was service broker related. I just could not remember it. That is so funny. I thought I thought uh, blast from the past for you is like 1998. Hey 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 hey. <laughs> it was in the context of uh, you know Dougie Fresh over here. Uh. <clears throat> I don't go back to the soap days like some soap folks. days. Ooh, that's Ooh. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Should I start mentioning OS two? Come on. Yes, please do. Hey. Yes. Uh, but the Microsoft version. The Microsoft version. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was Xenix, wasn't it? Oh, no, sorry. That was the Linux version. No, the Microsoft version went up to 1.3, and then IBM Ford did their own thing unsuccessfully. Mm, it wasn't that long ago. I want to say maybe five or six years ago. I swear I saw an ATM machine that had, like, a, a blue screen on it, but it was the OS2 logo. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, like the, this, it this, yeah the hardware failures do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, Thomas, are you there? Uh, I'm on the line, yes. Yeah, excellent. Cool, gotcha. Okay, I think I got everybody. <clears throat> okay, we've got a small group, but it's three after, so why don't I go and get started? Oh, wait a minute, hold on. Let me ping Mike so that he knows we're starting because he's supposed to be talking at some point. All right. Let's get started here. Um, ba -da -ba -bum -bum. Um, all right, community time. <clears throat> Anything people want to bring up that's not on the agenda from the community? All right, moving forward then, KubeCon. All right, we have almost everything settled. Uh, let's just talk about a couple of things here. So just a reminder, if you are planning on being there and going to join the face-to-face, -face, put your name here just so we know who's going to be there. Um, we do actually have a time. Thursday at 10.30. Uh, they basically said they, we could have the room anytime after 10.30, but looking at the schedule um, between lunch being um, later and then the serverless uh, session being later, um, and then after that, I figured people were gonna start leaving, and since it's the last day, I thought 10.30 would be the best time to do it. Um, that way we can end in time for lunch. So that's the, that's the current time. Um, we don't have a location yet, but we should get that at, at some point in the not too distant future. Okay. Uh, the question with the uh, Mobile World Congress having, uh, just having been canceled, um, are there any rumors flying around that KubeCon may fall victim to the coronavirus? I have not heard anything. Is anybody else? Yeah, the, there was an article on uh, the new stack, and it, it's still a go. I guess we'll we'll know more as we get closer. Okay. So there are rumors, all right. Yeah. All right. Um, well, last thing. Um, for the booth sign up, I created a little table here for people to add their names. Um, if I have a, since I only have two slots here, um, if you need more, either add another column or just hit return and put your name in there. I was assuming we'd be lucky if we can get two people. Uh, the only thing I wanted to point out is the cloud events session is here and the serverless session is here. If you did want to attend those, then obviously don't put your name there, but it would still be nice if we had someone at the booth at those two particular times. So sign up when you guys can. Um, all right, anything else from KubeCon planning people can think of that I'm forgetting? All right, moving forward then. Um, all right, SDK, we had a call last week, so there was no call this week. For anybody from the SDK team have anything they wanna update the group on? Okay, not hearing any. The Rust SDK is still up for discussion. So far, the two groups of people who have an existing SDK are interested in doing some sort of merging, um, but there's still discussions on how to actually make that happen. So once they actually get that settled, then we can bring the formal proposal forward and you guys can say yay or nay to it. And I suspect it will be a yay, but I want them to actually settle the, the merging discussion first before we talk about bringing it in. Um, Kathy, anything you want to update the group on relative to the workflow stuff? 
Um, okay, yeah, so we had uh, a meeting the first week uh, workflow meeting yesterday, and then the team decided we're going to have um, by um, no monthly meetings. So every um, so the time it changed to the Monday on the first Monday of every month. Um, and then we are going to have um, because there's uh, some PRs on um, there, which we are going to discuss on um, um, next Monday. So um, so we're going to have one extra meetings next Monday. And so what we will discuss is um, whether um, the event trigger could be, uh, should be a single event or it could be a combination of event, basically like, you know, and multiple events, end of multiple events, or all of multiple events. And yeah, we're going to discuss that. Um, so I think, you know, if you know you are interested, you're welcome to join. We'd like more people to join and then, you know, to, to get the input from um, everyone. All right, cool, thank you. Any questions for Kathy? Uh, yeah, first, I thank you that uh, we can now have it every uh, first Monday of the month because I couldn't make it yesterday. So thanks for arranging that. And um, yeah, uh, for the I think for the agenda next Monday, uh, we also want to see uh, Theomir's demo. So I just wanted to add that. I don't know if there's, yeah, but there is an agenda document. I think you'll have the link on the workflow subgroup. Yeah, there's the link right there. Oh, no, the the, the Google Doc. Yeah, isn't that the Google Doc for the? Oh, that's the spec. You're right. The um, the agenda doc. I don't have that. I'll try to get that. Um, yeah, I created the agenda um, document there. Anyone can add, you know, any topic um, they would like to discuss. Yeah, in the meeting. Oh, and one more question, just to get up to speed. Um, there was a original design discussion mentioned that happened in around June, July. 2018. I looked it up in the uh, log of the serverless working group meeting, meeting minutes. I requested access. If you could grant it, that would be nice so I can see what was originally discussed. Um, which doc are you referring to? The, 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 the old, uh, this agenda doc we're looking at here, but this is the Very old, old Google doc, uh, okay. Google, Google Drive document. I, think, I will try uh, Casey, to fix that. Uh, if you could grant yeah, access. I'll, I'll try to open that up. I don't know why it's not, but I'll fix that during the call. Okay, thanks. Yep. So I, I, sorry, just a quick question. So just look, um, where are the details for the, those meetings and the dial-ins for that? I will add that to the agenda doc right here when I get the, oh, cool. when I find the link. So later, while well, Mike and, and uh, Clemens are rambling on about the new spec, I'll try to find that. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you. Yep. All right, moving forward, let's go ahead and jump into it then. Mike, since you are on now. Hey. Um, where would you like to focus? So I dropped the link in uh, near the top there. I, I put together uh, a candidate, please do not consider this final by any means, uh, open API spec for what discovery might look like um, with a sample uh, response. I'm talking about this right um, here, I assume, right? Yeah. Okay, let me open that for people. Here you go. Um, so because of that, I put a, a couple more comments and edits into the, to the main doc as I kind of thought through this and, 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 and thought about what it should look like. Um, in particular, I think it's interesting to think about the cardinality of the return. If uh, you should get back a source and all of the types that it produces, or if the key for that should be um, essentially source and type uh, so that you know, the thing I worry about is that one of the things that discovery is supposed to do is tell you how to create a subscription. And if as a producer, I've got, um, you know, uh, n different event types that I produce and the configuration is different for each one of those, um, does that bit of discovery get too hard to manage or does it grow too large? Um, so not taking a stand on either side, something I think, think people should think about um, the other thing is, is filters. Like I, I'm starting to question how deep we need to go on filters in the discovery part um, in terms of uh, what we should publish there. Um, we have uh, an opinion on this. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so we, we actually talked, we talked in the, in the later section, we talk about uh, filters and Ryan um, uh, wrote that up. Um, the, 
Um, yeah, if we scroll down to the subscription section, further down, further down, further down, there's some area where we talk about filters there. Yep. So, um, and there are two levels of filters effectively, because first of all, in discovery, there needs to be a mechanism and you're describe, just describing that for our query and that's a filter of sorts. And um, then we need to effectively have a way to filter out of, once you have found a subscription API endpoint, then you need to be able to go and tell that endpoint uh, which kinds of events you need. And um, we should always assume that um, a single subscription endpoint can potentially have overlapping numbers of, um, of events and event types, which means it can spew out uh, many, many different ones. And I think, so first of all, the discovery API in some way needs to reflect the fact that a single subscription manager can potentially yield many ki different kinds of events, also from different, many, from, from different kinds of sources. And then the filter, and then for the filtering model, um, we need to have in the discovery API, we need to have effectively a metadata information that says which kinds of filters are supported because we think we that we're going to have multiple different um, uh, dialects of filters, uh, including pluggable ones, and I th and what, by what we're currently thinking, we're only going to define um, have a fixed definition that everybody must support of exactly one, which is effectively filtering. Um, and, and Ryan is going to define this in more detail, but this is just the cursory idea that you have effectively for source and for type and for subject, you have a prefix and a suffix filter and a, and a, and a complete match filter for any of those three fields. And uh, those fields are always and. And so that's the, that's the simplest filter dialect that we think, that we think of. And if you are support, if there are multiple more filter dialects, like a more complex one that allows you to go and do a match against um, all the properties and one that probably supports an or, or you have a SQL, a SQL like uh, filter, et cetera, then you would effectively have in the discovery API uh, or sorry, in the discovery metadata that as you that register that, that should basically tell you which kinds of filters you can use against that subscription manager. That, that kind of meshes a little bit with what I'm thinking in terms of like, should there be a baseline expectation that um, all subscription providers have a, a, a certain baseline filter that they provide? Mm -hmm. uh, I'd be a little bit cautious about um, doing both prefix and suffix matches. Um, I worry about scale, scalability of suffix matches with some of the transports that I'm aware of. Yeah, we've, so, so that's, a, that's effectively a query into, into the cloud event that comes by. Mm -hmm. And we've been, um, so from implementation experience, we, we, this is exactly what we have as, the, as our event grid normal filters. And then the, we have advanced filters, which then also allow you to take custom properties into account. Which is uh, which is a little bit more complicated, and uh, we're actually charging more for these advanced filters. Um, so, so the the simplest one is literally just the you know those three fields and the equivalents right now in in, in event grid with prefix suffix suffix and direct match, which is fairly efficient to impl implement. And as soon as it get, gets more complicated, you get into an advanced case yeah. where you then um, that is more compute intensive, and then we then also um, like if you if you start using that feature, then you also need uh, need to pay a little bit more. So that's yeah, how like that's more because it's, 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 it's like you said, it's more CPU intensive. Mm -hmm. um, with with that interplay then of of you know I termed it domain specific languages in the discovery section, but like one of the things I struggled to represent when I was thinking through this is how to represent what that subscription specific filter language is in a machine readable discovery doc. Um, because I think that like you're really, the information there is really for humans to, right. to interpret and not for machines. Um, so if anybody has thoughts on how to represent that in discovery. So, so the, the prior art I've been referring to on our call is uh, how MQP does this. Okay. Um, 
So NQP has a, a concept, has a has so-called archetype um, of filter in its uh, type system that can be applied to um, a, a, a so-called source definition, which means you walk up to an NQP server and say, I want to ha have data from this particular source and here's a filter for it. But NQP itself does not specify um, what filters might be. So it's basically just a blank, a blank canvas effectively in the core NQP spec. And then there are, then there are complementing spec. We have a, now a filter expression spec and then there's um, three specs that are defined in, a, in the Apache um, Active, ActiveMQ project um, that define these filter types. And the filters are identified then basically just by the type ID. And the type ID is, uh, in one case, it's org.apache door uh, colon mqp colon um, JMS filter um, or JMS message selector. And then in the, in the other cases, they're called or, um, org, oasis, blah, blah, blah. So they have effectively just human readable names, which are identifiers. And um, if you are asking for a filter, you're effectively just giving its type, and that's how we identify it. Does that help, Mike? Yep, thanks. Okay. Were there other areas of the of your portion of the spec that you wanted to highlight? Who are you talking to? Mike. Not you, not you Clemens. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think so. I put a, I put a couple of questions on there. If people want to comment on my comments, if you want to look at the the candidate Open API spec and give me feedback, I'm happy to adjust that. Um, let's see. One thing I did cross out was uh, the auth scopes. I commented last asking last week if we should take that out. Um, again, that's another thing I'm not sure about how to represent in a generic manner because how you do authentication is gonna be um, somewhat specific. So there's two sides to that, right? There's the um, making a call to the, the cloud subscription endpoint, and then any authentication information that the subscription provider, uh, the producer might need to communicate with you if they're putting stuff on like say a topic that you own. Um, the other thinking there is that letting individual service providers use their already existing authentication means. So like if Google were to provide this using Google IAM to control um, which subscriptions you can and cannot create uh, rather than putting that in the spec, I think is a wise decision. Um, yeah. Yeah, we, we, so one of the things, we, I think we need to go and agree on some level of, of um, token flow. Um, but but there is a there is effectively a triplet of authentication contexts which are all kind of following on to, on on to each other, and um, we have to think through what that means because first you start with the discovery you start with discovery um, in in a in a flow where you don't where you don't know anything you just know you just know that you want to subscribe to a particular kind of event from a particular kind of source, and you don't know where that endpoint is. Um, then there is effectively you need to walk up to the discovery catalog, which is somewhere near you, right? Which is in your reach because you need to be able to be, to see it. For that, you need to have an authentication token that now goes and points you to a different service, which is elsewhere, for which you also now need an authentic uh, uh, authorization token. But it's not necessarily clear how you get that. Um, and then once you have, once you are at the subscription endpoint, you then need to go and pass that subscription endpoint some form of authentication token or refresh token that it, that this, the subscription manager can then use to go and push events over there. So there are three three scopes, mm -hmm. and I think we need to make them all gel with each other in some way. Um, and we also need to have a mechanism specifically that allows a interested subs potential subscriber to discover something and then establish a relationship with um, the, the subscription manager without necessarily having a token in hands. So that's going to be a little tricky. Yes. So, so Heinz, your hand is up. Uh, 
Heinz. Sorry, I had the world famous mute button enabled again. Mm -hmm. uh, just quick comment that it's uh, it's good that uh, uh, to look at the model of the open API, but I would recommend to look at the async API, which is an offshoot where open API is directed purely to a, a REST request reply model. And async API is the offshoot to try and uh, address asynchronous events as opposed to the synchronous request reply. Um, it, uh, I, I think it might be a, a little bit more eye-opening as to how you can represent some of these things, what they could capture. Um, so uh, definitely, uh, if we're looking at purely event-driven, uh, Open API is important, but uh, you should also look at an async API as well. Yep. Okay, uh, Jam, your hands up next. Um, just a couple of points then. So just to, to follow up on Heinz's comment, I, I think I thought async API was more around the the definition of an endpoint that sort of consumes or produces an event rather than um, sort of formalizing a subscription uh, discovery and creation model, which I, I think is probably what we're talking about here. But uh, just to add on to Clemens's comment, um, I can see use cases in our environment where. Um, if you're unauthenticated when you do a, um, a, a, a discovery call, um, you might get a different response than you would if you were authenticated, yeah? Because we expose, you know, different capabilities to different partners or, or, uh, or third parties. So, you know, um, I, I just want to throw out there that from, certainly from our standpoint, this wouldn't be an open book. Yeah, so you couldn't just look in and say, well, what, what sort of events do you produce? Because that's always in the context of what your privileges are. Um, uh, sorry, I can't remember the, the guy, uh, whoever had produced that open API spec. Um, you can define the scopes, can't you, without actually defining how they're produced or, or so I just wonder why why you took those out. Mike, did you want to talk to that one? Sorry, Mike. Uh, sorry, oh, why I took which parts out? I thought you said you removed uh, the concept of scopes from so, the open API spec. And, and my understanding yeah. uh, that you could still define that this operation needed a scope, uh, but you don't necessarily need to define how it comes into being. Sure. I mean, I think when we talk about oscopes, we're starting to get into the realm of defining what the authenticator tokens look like, um, uh, which we certainly we certainly could do. We could also leave that fairly fairly unspecified that like it is an auth scope to be determined by the provider. Um, so, like again, thinking about like if you're um, using like a vanilla OIDC uh, protocol. Um, that you know that you have a job that has a specific audience in it. For, for example, uh, if you're using something like uh, again like Google Google's IAM uh, protocol, that it requires we could, we could specify a certain permission. Um, uh, that's really again thinking about things that are probably uh, for human consumption versus machi machine consumption, and trying to strike strike right balance. Because I want some of the things in. Uh, some of the things here are around uh, useful to tooling, uh, and some of the things are going to be useful to uh, to humans. So just yeah. trying to make that balance. Sure. Yeah. For interoperability, we will definitely need to have a, a, a full first a full REST API, and then I really think that discovery is something. So discovery might be something that is really a human browsable thing, but also um, discovery very frequently is something that um, just drives dynamic systems. Yeah. Um, in 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 a very automated way, which means machines need to understand that as well, and um, and need to dynamically understand that. And once you do this, then um, we're we're at the level where all of this needs to interop, which means we need to we need to define we need to at least agree on a minimal mechanism for you know, how to um, flow credentials, and um, uh, and I would at least 
at least define a binding of this model to OAuth 2 because that's the most common one that we have. But there's an interaction. There has to be a discovery REST API. There will, there will certainly be a REST subscription API. And then coming back to Heinz's point, um, the, 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 the async API path is that actually comes to, comes to bear when, the, um, when we talk about the delivery endpoints, because the delivery endpoints, they are clearly async. Yeah. So there's an interaction here between these two synchronous APIs, which are the discovery and the subscription APIs, and an async path, which is then the delivery path. And, and I think we need to have definitions for, for, um, for all of them, potentially. Um, if we're starting to define this with, with metadata as we're starting to do this here, then having a definition that is also covered with async API, which will then effectively an async, an async API formalization of the, the cloud events transport bindings um, will also be helpful. So Mike, just to draw your attention to it, Heinz pasted a link in the chat for a, a good async versus open API thing. Cool. I'm sure you saw that. Yep, I got it. Thanks. Okay. There's also right. a good article on event, uh, cloud events and async API as well, which uh, they're already talking about as well. So. But the async API guys are not really sure how to represent the cloud event. They propose several different ways, and it's a, I found it really confusing. We can help them. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been talking with them because uh, I was interested in in open or async API for Knative and cloud events, but the model is more geared towards a, a pub sub representation versus. Uh, a producer or a consumer that would like to advertise what they want to do. Right, so like async API is a great way to visualize the topology of your entire application and all the connections and queues. But if you just want to have like, what does this one thing produce? I found it uh, also confusing. Okay. Um, Mike, thank you for putting this together. That helps me a lot. Um, just curious, anybody else have any questions or comments for Mike's section? Okay, not hearing any. Let me put you on the spot here, Mike. Um, and this <laughs> warning for Clemens, I'm gonna do the same thing to you. So I feel like <clears throat> right now the stage we're at is people are adding lots of sort of questions and commentary on the side and stuff. And as a result, um, I feel like the, the actual text of the spec itself is moving kind of slowly. Um, would it be useful for us to pick a deadline and, let me rephrase that, pick a deadline for a very first rough draft, even if everybody hates it, at least it's something on paper that people can then concretely say yes or no, I like or dislike that. Just to, as a, just as a forcing function kind of thing. <clears throat> Meaning, like, get a first draft that is like a markdown on GitHub. Well, not, well, this doesn't have to be markdown. We could still use the Google Doc at least for right now. But, but basically, what I'm looking for is to get rid of all the sort of commentaries that we have throughout the entire section, and and write it more as a formal spec and say, here, this is what the response should look like. And basically, you know, copy and paste this into the doc and say, this is what it's, this this is a sample of what it's going to look like. A section that defines all the various fields are they strings are they integers are they arrays that kind of stuff and just put a stake in the ground and say this is your view or the group's view if you guys are still talking of what you think this part of the spec should look like and rather than just people just sort of randomly putting comments out there as opposed to hey i think we should talk about this we should talk about that kind of stuff just something a little more concrete for us to to noodle over and as i said even if people hate it at least it's a stake in the ground um yeah, so I, uh, I I can do that within two weeks. I'm on I'm on vacation next week personally. So vacation? Uh, oh man! I know. <laughs> yeah, actually, I was I was actually thinking about a two week deadline since I didn't want to spring it on you with only one week to go. So no, yeah, two I need weeks to go somewhere works. warm next week. Uh, <laughs> okay, now you got to name it. Where are you going? Oh, uh, Disneyland. Ah, cool. Okay. So you're okay with a first pass at a rough draft in two weeks? Okay, yeah, I mean, I, I don't hear anybody saying that there's major overhauls that are needed, so I, I'm fine to throw it out there and then maybe somebody will object. 
Yeah, to, to be honest, I think it's more just a matter of taking all these ideas that are people, I mean, ideas that people have put there, either in comments or in like this text that I've highlighted here, and just put it more into a speckish form. That way it looks more real, as opposed to just brain brainstorming things. Okay, cool. All right, before we move on to the next section, last chance, any questions or comments for Mike? All right, cool. Clemens, you're up. Yes, uh, so the, we actually already covered the meat of the discussion or the, one, the, one, the one coherent piece of the discussion that was the, uh, the filter section where we then spoke about um, potential dialects and then spoke about the, the constraints we want to put ourselves under for um, an initial uh, simple filter. Otherwise, we've been walking through a bunch of the comments that were made on the side and kind of um, uh, took notes for home for homework. Um, Heinz had also sent um, three miles of text um, regarding push versus pull. Um, <laughs> that um, so and and that, as we were talking about uh, push versus pull, um, I think we we came to the conclusion that in spite of common industry and documentation usage um, in the sense that we've been using this here. Um, it is yet confusing enough in, in what we're trying to describe here that we're going to use some alternatives for um, for this um, also to make time make Heinz happy. So um, we'll but also to make everybody happy. So um, we're going to we're going to find some alternative uh, um, description for for pull in the push terms. Um, but the, like the intended, the intended uh, um, uh, meaning will hopefully not change with that. Um, uh, that was mostly so. Those discussions took uh, um, um, most took up most of the call. Um, we have then one of the things we have uh, also decided because of timing uh, issues is that we're going to skip next week's call, which means there will be no updates from us. Okay. Jim, I apologize. Is that hand new or old? No, that's new. Oops. Sorry about that. Okay. Any questions for Clemens or the rest of that sub team? So I think, so let, let me just say what the roadmap here, here mm -hmm. is, uh, because that uh, will be uh, useful. Um, I think where we are is that um, we will fill out the remaining um, uh, the remaining uh, you know transport dependent properties. I think uh, we would like that we have a NAT section um, at the bottom, and we have been thinking that um, someone from Scenario could probably go and take a look at that. Um, also, uh, a little bit further down, there's a section where we have defined effectively specific transport properties, a little bit further down even there, the protocol settings. Um, because we're all, we're, calling that is wonderful, please do that. Um, and um, so that would be, that would be super helpful. And then um, I think what we want, what we will then do next, once we have filled these things in, um, is that um, uh, Ryan will come up with uh, an in initial data model for what that filter should look like, look like the, 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 the basic filter, and I think then fairly quickly we're going to land at what a REST API might look like from the outline. And then um, also we'll, we'll take a look at uh, whether how we can go and realize that REST API um, or that you know, RPC API at some sort um, over um, the various transports or where, where we need it and where we don't. Okay. So we're, we're making, I think we're making good progress in mm -hmm. spite of not, not, doing, not doing, taking, taking an, an, off, an off week next week. <laughs> All right. Any questions or comments for Clemens and the team? So it, um, just to clarify then, um, we keep commenting on the doc or we're going to, should I just wait until something more? Keep, um, keep commenting on the doc. Sorry, Clemens. Yeah, please keep, keep commenting on the doc. I, um, 
uh, I think I think there there will soon come a time that we're going to make this a little bit more formal. Probably break break this out of this document, but um, um, we uh, um, yeah for for now comments on the document are fine. Okay, I I know I made one that Ryan sort of commented on, and I fully understood what he was driving at there. Um, so. You, one of the situations we face, uh, and this is you know more of a business event issue maybe than you know low level IoT style <coughs> events, is where our you know third parties sort of turn around and want to essentially um, re receive or re pull um, events that that happened in the past. Um, so, uh, and Ryan had a very good you know comment that you know, we didn't really want any sort of implication around you know um, that sort of level of complexity in, in this spec but I think for me it means um, you know I'd be looking for some way for uh, companies like ours to sort of extend the subscription endpoint a little bit to add those extra sort of more nuanced um, capabilities uh, and if there's a generic way to do that you know um, that would be very interesting to me. So, so there are two. There are two things you might be asking. One is um, if you want to have a you know scroll up and down the event stream um, feature, then that might be something that you can that is covered by the pull a the pull style API. We haven't enumerated. We we didn't put Kafka here, uh, but we probably should. So I haven't. Th that's an omission that I thought about this week. Um, so with Kafka or with AMQP and a source filter, you can obviously go and, and use um, and, and an infrastructure that supports this, like uh, Kafka with Strimzy or Event Hub or Azure Event Hubs. Um, you could um, obviously go and, and have an event stream. You have been discovering this event stream using the Discovery API, and then um, the Discovery API basically tells you, hey, this is a Kafka um, source. Um, and then you would walk up to the Kafka source and you would attach to it and you can go scrolling forward. So that's, that's one option. The, the other option would be one that is probably f f covered by the filtering API, by the filtering model. And we have been, one of the things we've been discussing is like, we, we're going to make this basic filter and then you can potentially go and subclass that filter with your own extensions where you can say, I want to have the, the events of this sort. And then you have a special filter property, which says, but I want to have events from this time to this time. And then you create a new pull, a new push subscription into an existing subscription manager with the assumption that the subscription manager holds a backlog. And then as you're providing that filter, the filter will, the, the subscription manager will then go and send you the events for that particular uh, period. And then there might be a further option to go and uh, retire that subscription as soon as those events have been delivered. Is that something that you might think of there? That's an interesting twist. Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, our partners tend to just think more simplistically than that. They just sort of say, you know, uh, well, so, we, so for instance, we expose a capability where you can, as a partner, go in and see all the events that have been sent to you. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can ask for you know that set to be replayed and then maybe that then becomes intermingled with your with other events that are coming your way um so some of that's triggered manually you know i'd rather prefer that was done you know systematically um so but yeah i i, I get your point um uh, it does imply you know storage on the back end which yeah. you know i i can fully see that probably a lot of people on this call wouldn't want to do um but it's for me it's more you know can we leave gaps in the spec or mechanisms where where we can extend you know these subscription endpoints without necessarily breaking the spirit of what's already there yeah if it can't be achieved through um, the sort of mechanisms that you described yeah so that's what we that's i think that's what we thought with the filtering with the filtering uh, pluggability because I think your scenario can be achieved through a, you have to communicate, you have to communicate to the server from a consumer perspective. You have, communi have to communicate to the server that you want to have a certain set of events again, which 
amounts to, in my mind, to a new subscription of sorts. Yeah, it's it is a historic, a historic subscription of, um, of a buffer of a stream, yeah. Yeah, and, and because the gesture is the same, right? If you, if you go and um, do, if you go and, and, and start doing a, a, a subscription, in, in quotes, with Kafka, you specify an offset and start reading from that particular offset. And if you only want to have a slice of, of events from the past, well, you pick a different offset and you start reading from that offset and then you stop at some point. So even with a pull model, it's the same thing. And, um, and in, the push, in the push world, you're gonna have a, the, the default way of doing a subscription is to get all the events that, that have not yet been delivered on that particular um, uh, channel to avoid the word topic. Um, and then if you, if you have something that retains history, then you have to tell that push subscription manager to go and grab into that history and get you those events. And that's, that is best expressed through that filter. So that's, that's how, so we thought of the filter and this is why, why um, Ryan put this in the, the dialect is effectively expressing this, right? We, we're gonna define a dialect or filter, but then the notion is that you can go and build your own filters. And of course, you can also build on the, on the default dialect and then go and specify all, all the other options. And I think of this like our, effectively like the extensions we have in the core spec is that we might even have, you know, well-defined, multiple well-defined filter dialects um, that you can then go and use. So that kind of history retrieval filter might be one of those options. Cool, thank you. All right. Any other questions, comments? Okay. So, Clemens, I'll put the same question to you. I, actually, I feel like your section is closer to where we want to be in terms of the first rough draft. Um, so, thank you for that. But do you think you could push for, say, two weeks for um, uh, something that you, could, that you would claim is a first full rough draft? Uh, two weeks is a little aggressive. Three years. Okay. Just because we like we really can't get it, get that together for next week. Okay, that's fine. I just want to make sure we don't let it let it linger too long. So Mike yeah. will be two, and then you guys will be three. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Any other questions or comments relative to the spec in general? Okay. If not, thank you guys for that. And I oh I see Mike had a drop. <clears throat> in that case, let's talk about some PRs. Actually, let's talk about this one first, only because uh, Klaus is on the call. So Klaus, I th think you may have changed the formatting down to 80 columns, but did you make any other changes on this one? No. Okay, I didn't think so. In, in the comments that was just, uh, I think you proposed to uh, uh, give it another uh, a headline on its own. Oh yeah. I would be open to that, but yeah, apart from that, there was no other comment asking for a change. Okay. Um, any questions on this one? I mean, we've been discussing on Slack, uh, so you had, I think, some doubts. Well, I, my, I think my, my questions actually are, are not directly related to this. I think it's more okay. different questions, and I don't want to go into that right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, so this has been out there for at least a week now. Anybody have any questions or comments on this? Okay, any objection to approving it then? Okay, just a, so a quick question for you, Heinz. Uh, I'm sorry, not Heinz, Klaus. Um, <clears throat> do you want to add that section header just so it stands out or not? It's, it's up to you. I can do that. I don't really have a strong opinion about it. So I, but I, I had the feeling that it's a very special case and that it doesn't need that much of attention. So that's okay. why I just put it in the end of that section about creating events. But Okay. If you want to hide it, that's fine. I'm okay with that. So, okay. I'll just go ahead and merge it then after the call. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, whoop, gosh, good golly, I can't type. Okay. There's this one. Now, this one, Jem, you had a question on this one. Do, do, do. Yeah, sorry. Well, that's okay. what, that's I really good. don't have a strong opinion. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it, I think it was just the structure of it. Um, 
was just uh, different to the way we do it, which was what um, sort of led me to some of these questions. Um, so that, yeah, that was basically it. I mean, it could be completely valid, um, but it, it's just not structured a way that we personally would do that. So I wasn't quite sure it was valid or not. Um, so you, you want to change, if he changes this line, and I, I apologize, I, I know Zippo about the schema stuff. It's just, just yes, yeah, so that's just referring to the version of the JSON schema definition. Yeah, so draft seven versus draft four versus whatever, yeah. Right, I'm just wondering though, if he makes that one line change, <clears throat> do you think it changes anything else in the PR? No, that, that particular line doesn't. Okay. Yeah, um, I think it's just more correct um by doing it that way um because that schema is evolving uh, it's still not a standard it's still you know draft form unfortunately um the other one uh, the structuring one um was more to do with the way um that you know the definitions blocks are is you know the typically the way we do it is you know following that other that other link um hold on that I put in like this one. Is, yeah, so that's an example from you know the spec themselves. And if you put one that up, keep one or down, whichever way. Yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Yes, yeah, so up a bit. Sorry, up a bit, up a bit, up a bit, up a bit. <laughs> up, stop. There you go. Okay. So, um, this is the way typically we would do it. Yeah, if we were using this definition construct where we put definitions at the top. And then your ob, you know, then the properties of the object you're defining come further down, um, which means you then address it using that sort of syntax with you know hash slash definitions. Um, that's the way we do it, and that's we typically do it like that because that's the way the spec writers sort of or the schema designers sort of advised us to do it. Um, it going back to the PR. Um, it may be that that still works. No, it actually doesn't because you see there the dollar ref for definitions. Um, I, I don't think, I, I, I just want to make sure that somebody's run that through a code gen tool and it does actually work. It, it, the, the, the structuring just looks slightly wrong to me. Because I think the hash means you go to the top of the tree and then come down from there. Um, so since definitions is not at the top, it's actually part of the properties block. Um, I don't think the the parsing works correctly. Uh, doesn't but isn't the definitions at the top? It's just no, lower down the, in the block. The definitions is there. It's part of um, properties. Properties is the root in this. Oh. Block. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so I'm just seeing it, It's easier to see if you view view the whole file rather than the. Um, okay, properties is two n. Yeah. See, definitions is 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 inside properties. It's not outside it? of properties. I see yeah. indented two here, and, and properties it. is indented two here. Where's the closing bracket for properties then? All right. I would assume it's this. Oh, I read this completely wrong. And then, well, if if I'm right, and then this map this. No, that if that's true, then that maps is to right. here. So I think I think it is at the top it level. It's just lower down this, in the dock. I was just having an early morning brain fart then. <laughs> I mean, the, the schema reference. Yeah, okay. I, I retract. I think the schema reference. Would like I'd like that change though. Okay, so I'll I'll reach out to uh, uh, Timor. I think is his name. Um, asking about this one then. Yeah. Okay. Does it's anybody else? Yeah. Okay, does anybody else have a question about this one? About the uh, which version of schema to use, Heinz? Uh, just make a comment. Uh, we have a product that's generating async API, and I was testing with the uh, the schema. And up until about two weeks ago, where we updated to a, a, a newer version of the JSON parser stuff, it would fail, but it does now pass with the new version. So, uh, um, 
depending okay. on your version of schema parser, it will fail or pass, but the newer ones seem to be operating correctly. But it would be a little cleaner to your point where, I, in fact, uh, I like the suggestion of putting all the definitions at the top and then the properties underneath because it is a little, it, well, it's not a little. For me, initially, it was very confusing because you're jumping up and down as opposed to just sequentially being able to run through it. But that's more of a readability as opposed to an error or anything else. Yeah, so maybe, Jim, you should modify this comment to say, rather than lives at the same level, it talks about living at the top. Or, you know, to, to, get, to, to get the same ordering that, that this thing shows. I will, I will um, fall on my sword and, uh, and accept that. Criticism. Yes. Okay. Okay. So um, I will poke him later today after you update the comments uh, to see if he has any opinions on this one. Thank you, Jim. Anybody else have any comments or questions on this one? I mean, does everything else basically look okay? You guys think that the uh, do, 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 that the the JSON schema itself in here is basically okay? Okay, not hearing any objection. So we'll just assume it's these minor things that Jim is bringing up. Okay, cool. Um, I think that's, uh, yeah, I think that's it that in terms of what we can talk about. Um, all right, almost at the end of the call. Anything else for the agenda that people want to bring up? All right, not hearing any. Last roll call then. Grant, are you still around? Oh, we lost Grant. Vlad, you there? I am here. Hi. Excellent. Hi. Uh, Christian. Christian, you still there? What about Falco? Yes, I'm here. Excellent. And last chance for Christian. Oh, there he comes. Hey there. Hey I there. Switched, I, I switched <laughs> mics and uh, couldn't find my, uh, I couldn't find a window. Not so at yes, all. I'm here. All right. Excellent. And Grant isn't there and I don't, this person Vin, so I can get their last names. All right. Anybody else that I missed for the agenda or the uh, attendee list? All right. Cool. In that case, we get a whole seven minutes, or I'm sorry, six minutes back your day. All right. Thanks everybody. We'll talk to you next week. Have a good one. You too. Sure. Bye.